Well, welcome, folks. This is John Workman. Hey, hi. It's Mr. Sams. And you know, Mr. Sams, I was thinking. Mm. You know, um, I was thinking of going on vacation. Oh yeah. Yeah. Where are you headed? I was thinking I was going to go to Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Yeah, Mole. Milwaukee, like chemistry malls. Uh, it's my favorite place, Milwaukee. Uh, yeah, it's a good place. Yeah. I, I hear you've been thinking about getting a new haircut. I have, you know. I'm thinking about going back, bringing the mullet back. The mullet back. Uh-huh. You know, I've been thinking about getting a mole A mole Oh, yeah. yeah. We can pull the 80s haircut. Yeah. yeah be pretty cool. Yeah, nice. Yeah, how would that look? I don't know. That's a... Right? Like that? Oh, yeah. That looks wrong. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I agree. Hey, um... Uh, <laughs> What's your favorite movie? Um, I kind of like The Incredible Mole. Oh, I like that. You know, yeah, my favorite is The yeah. Last of the Mole Oh, that's a good one, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always wanted, you know, I, I like to golf sometimes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You've ever gotten a mole in one? You know, I've been working on that. Oh, yeah? So, yeah. Okay. okay, yeah. Okay, all right. Hey, folks. Uh, podcast 15.1. Were those the worst jokes you've ever heard in your life? But, um... <laughs> Hey, in Chapter 15, this is what we're going to talk about. Common Nine. Heck, what are betters? Buffer capacity, titration and pH curves, acid base indicators, oh, and the bells oh. ringing, solubility, equilibrium, KSP, and then the KSP quality oh, analysis. Oh, KSP. It's K-S-P grand. KSP is very grand. So, hey, if you would just take your notes and we can follow along. Hey, this one should be short. This is a pretty easy podcast. Yep. Hey. Common ion. What do you think common means? Common means it's the same. Something's the same. All right, so sometimes in an equilibrium solutions, they have one more than one ion, and that ion is called the common ion. So, for example, when you take sodium fluoride and you dissociate it, it mm-hmm. dissociates into... Na+. plus. Now, you must have a plus. Why do you need a positive It's a there? dissociated ion, right. so it has to have a charge to be You an must ion. have that charge. Now, Lee, I know you're listening. Lee, you must have the... Charge! Dun, 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 dun. Right, have the charge. Yep. Lee never leaves his charge, so I have to pick uh, it. Okay, so sodium fluoride. So here's the kind of the deal here. So if you have this reaction, this is a, HF is a weak acid. Mm. So notice I have the double arrow right here. And the H positive, it breaks apart H's and F's. But if you were to add sodium fluoride, what does it actually do? Well, you're adding sodium ions and fluoride ions. So what you're doing by spiking those fluoride ions, you're shifting the equilibrium. You see, what I often see students do is that if I, they say re, they have a mixture of HF and NAF. The common mistake I see is they write HF plus, plus. NAF. <coughs> wrong! 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 That's very wrong. Don't do that, please. Okay, it's very bad. Because, you see, HF has a partner. His partner is F, F negative. Minus. And we've always said partners must always, always, always Always appear. Always on opposite. Always, yeah, on opposite sides. Yes. So notice that in this reaction, the HF is on the opposite side as the fluoride. Right. And so when you add sodium fluoride, you are essentially, as Mr. Sam said a minute ago, spiking the fluoride. It's like an equilibrium thing. It's actually going to drive your equilibrium back to the left. Yep. Because you're adding a fluoride. You are not adding fluorides to the reactant side over here. You're react- adding it to the product side. That's very, very critical. Very. Very critical. You screw that up, your host. Okay. Yep. Hey, so let's um, do a little problem here. Actually, this is one we've done before, but you'll see how it applies in a moment. Yes. All right. So we have a solution of acetic acid. Acetic acid. Okay. CH3COOH. By the way, that also could be written how else, Mr. Sam? Uh, HC2H3O2. Same thing. By the way, just for fun facts to know and tell, the reason they write it as CH3COOH yeah. is an organic thing. It's a structural thing. It tells you about where the, mo- the atoms end up on the molecule. So this right here is the CH3. CH3 mm-hmm. is this piece right here. And then the COOH. It actually looks like this when we do this Lewis structure. Yep. We'll learn how to do this when we do Lewis structures a little bit later. But this actually tells you the structure. This one doesn't tell you the structure. Nope. So this problem is just like an old chapter 14 problem. So if I have acetic acid, CH3, I'll write it this way, COOH. And that dissociates into CH3 COO. It's actually this hydrogen here that breaks apart ours, and that needs a minus charge. charge I was just about ready to plus say something. H positive. I, I, thought it, I, th- I thought I'd give you a chance there. I was doing a Lee oh, thing yeah. on you just to see if Lee caught it. Yep. Did you catch it, Lee? Good. <laughs> I'm glad you did that time. All right. So this was a point point one molar. One molar. Of course, there's none of this and none of this. Play the minus X game. So this is just like we've done for a long time. 
I love mm-hmm. it. Long, long time. I've had a long, long time doing this. Okay. All right. We so need one more bit of information that's not given in the problem. That would be the Ka value. And that happens to be? 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. How do you know that, Mr. Sanders? I've done acetic acid a million times over You've in these memorized problems. memorized it. Now, you guys don't need to memorize that. No. That would be on the test. Eventually, it just kind of gets stuck in your brain and rattles around there. Over 0 0.10 minus x. So now, okay. first, we get our solver out. Solver. And we take the solver. The solver x, if yep. you recall, is equal to the concentration of the hydrogen. Are we looking for pH or what are we looking for? Uh, we are looking for the percent, percent association. Percent association. So yes. x is the concentration of the hydrogen, which is, by the way, also the concentration of the CH3COO negative. Got to have the charge. And X is equal to Mr. Sam's is solving it on the solver. I'm frantically putting it on the solver So we're here. waiting for his we fast are, here calculator we are, skills. Here we are. Up to solve, we have point zero zero one three three. So point double oh one three three molar. So of course percent dissociation, you take x and you divide by the initial concentration times hundred. So point zero zero one three three divided by point ten times one hundred gives you one point three three percent. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Sure. That's one point three three percent. Now that's just a problem we've done before. Yep. Chapter fourteen took a test on it, so this is easy. Why are you wasting our time? Because guess what we just did? Yeah, we led into this one. We are leading into this particular problem. And it teaches something conceptual. A mixture that contains 0.1 molar acetic acid, like we did, and 0.1 molar sodium acetate. Now what would be the common mistake that you would see? The common percent? mistake would be to put those added together on the same side of the equation, but we don't want to do that. Like those. this. Yeah, like that. That is Wrong. Because you see, what is the sodium acetate? You really, the sodium is irrelevant. Right. Ultimately, sodium doesn't is do your, This is giving us a concentration of the acetate in the equilibrium expression. Yes. So we will rewrite our equilibrium expression. E H C two H three O two. Now I'll switch back to the other one, just because I don't know, because I did. Makes H positive plus C two H. 302. Now, this is right. a nice problem, yep. I-C-E. And we have 0.1 molar solution. 0, and we've done this, but guess what we've done? We also Oops. have 0.1 molar. What did I forget, molar. Lee? That's oh. right, the charge. I didn't even notice that. I didn't either. 0. 0.10. You see, what I've got here is now we have an initial amount of acetate. Right. The 0. 0.10. And there's still zero hydrogen. Right, because this is the, the starting. Then the equilibrium happens. Now we just do the same thing we've same done before. Thing. The only thing that's different is we now have something, we have an initial quantity over here, yep. so plus x, so this is x, but this of course will be plus x, it'll be 0 0.10 plus x. So now we'll use our Ka, and it will be equal to x times the quantity 0 0.10 plus x over 0 0.10 minus x. That's a, I'm going to say 0 0.1, I think it's easier. And then the Ka of course is still 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Now, of course, you have to plug this in your solver. Now, by the way, when you plug this in your solver, I would do it this way. I would say 1.8 e negative 5 times 0 0.10 minus x parentheses minus x times 0 0.10 plus x. I think I got my pluses and minuses right, didn't I? I did. And that was set equal to zero. That's how I would type it into my calculator, and then I would ask what x is, and I think it's going to be awfully close to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Should be pretty close. And just make a check of my work here. Mr. Sams is furiously typing furiously on the calculator. He's been in the clock. My kids used to call it the calculator. He's got the calculator working. Up so, cha, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. It's actually 1.7999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
It was what percentage of stands? Like 1.3 or um, something? It was, yes, 1.33%. And now we had point point zero one eight. Point zero one eight percent with Much the less. mixture, right? Yeah. Why? Well, we we had extra acetate in there to begin with, so what that did is it's it's, it's not going to let the reaction go as far right, or another way of looking at it is it kind of shifts the equilibrium to the left. Yeah, that's exactly the point here. So we essentially added the 0 0.10 acetate, and that shifts this reaction back to the left. Yep. By shifting the reaction left, there's more acetic acid and less H's. And yep. since X percentage is the X divided by the 0.1, the, since the X went down, the percentage goes down. So the more you add a common ion, the less, what would you say? Less dissociation. The less dissociation yeah. is going to occur. So that is critical to understand that concept. Okay, we want to cover another section. By the way, when I say 15.2, we're actually now in section 15.2 in your textbook. So right. if you're trying to follow along, we are using the Zumdahl 6th edition textbook for those of you out there in internet land. Um, um, but it, this is commonly taught of all over the country. Okay, A buffer. A buffer? Buffer. Should I buff my car? Yeah. I like to buff. I got one of those electric ones. You can oh, yeah. Like yeah, the yeah, yeah, that's cool. I like no, buff. I actually washed my car more often. I can actually use it. You know, some people have said that I am buff. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Who, who, who are those people? Lots of people. Oh, like, like okay. Athletically, I'm buff. I got oh. muscles you got a lot coming out of my muscles. Not really. I work on my. You laugh too much. Tummy okay. Muscle. You shouldn't laugh so much. Your tummy muscles. Yeah. That's with cookies, I think. I isn't know. It? Yeah. All right. What? But that's not what we're really talking about nope. today, are we? We're not talking about how buff no. Mr. Burton is or how good you can buff your car. Nope. We are talking about buffers. Acid base solutions. Okay. That are buffers. And what buffers do is they resist a change in pH. You guys have buffer systems in your body. Yeah. Keeps your blood at a particular pH. Keeps your cells at a particular pH. That that without them, if you drank a Coke, you would go into acidosis and you would die. So this is very good that we actually yeah. have buffered. Our blood is buffered. And so, um, but there are two components to a buffer. I say a buffer must have a weak acid. And number two, a significant quantity. Is the word quantity? Mm -hmm. Of the partner. Could it also be a weak base in its partner? Yes. Hold on. So let's finish this okay. idea. So the partner, and who is the partner? The partner will be the conjugate base of the weak acid. Right. So, so basically, I like to think they have to have partners in significant quantities. And significant quantities I'm defining as by a factor of 10 of each other. Mm -hmm. So if I have a weak base or a weak acid, so if I have acetic acid, the one we've been kind of playing around with here just today, the partner is acetate. So if this concentration is one molar, this concentration could be, say, 0.1 molar, tenth of that, right? So yep. they're within a factor of 10. Or on conversely, it could also 10 be molar. 10 molar. So it has a range of molarities. And if you have a significant quantity of both partners, then it is a buffer. Now, I just did an acid partner, acid-base partner. Mr. Sams, you were just alluding to that other one. What would you want to say there? Um, like ammonia. So you could have ammonia, which is a weak, weak base. base, and his partner, which ammonium. is... And ammonium is an H4. Plus charge. Oh, got to have that charge. charge. I did that on purpose, actually. Mm. And that is a weak acid, or technically he is his conjugate, conjugate. Yeah. acid. But it has to be his partner. Now, you can't just yes. have another conjugate acid. Yeah. You have to actually have the partners. And, of course, the, what's the difference between partners always? Uh, hydrogen. One hydrogen ion. Yes, hydrogen ion. So to go from ammonia to ammonium, you add a hydrogen. Yep. If we go back to our previous example, to go from acetate to acetic acid, you add a hydrogen ion. So that's the difference. Yep. That's, frankly, what a buffer is. And I don't know if you realize this, but this example with the common ion we did just a bit ago. We made a buffer solution. We made a buffer solution yep. right here. Yeah. See, because we had 0.1 of each. This is actually called sort of an ideal buffer because yeah. you have exactly the same molarities of both. And so you have made an ideal buffer where they have, and you have both the acetic acid and his uh, partner or the weak base conjugate base acetate and they are the same quantity yeah. it just has to be within the factor of 10. Has actually. anyone ever told you you're ideally buff? I am ideally buff. My uh, wife has said I'm uh, the well, ideal husband. It doesn't count. She's amazing. She knows everything. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's true. Okay, all right. So now let's do an example here. Again, this is an acetic acid sodium acetate solution. Now we've got some volumes going on here, so let's see if we can figure out. What is the mm. pH of a solution where 50 milliliters of 0.5 molar acetic acid, sodium acetate, is mixed with 25 milliliters of 0.25 molar acetic acid? All right, this is a little confusing. So what we need to do is we, oh, actually, let me say one more thing about buffers. Um, what units can you work with? Mm. Typically, you need to work with molarity units. And later on, we'll learn that you can actually, if it's buffered, if, only if buffered, you can actually also work with moles or even millimoles. And uh, we'll do that as the unit progresses. All right, let's go back to this problem. Now, first of all, we've got sodium acetate and acetic acid. Do so not add them together. I don't do this? No. Uh, why not? Because you don't put them on the same side. They're partners. Partners go on opposite this sides. This is wrong. You must not do wrong thing. Okay. So you actually break it down. HC2H3O. You just write the regular equation, the dissociation of the weak acid or the weak base. So this makes hydrogens and acetates. Now, we do have an issue is that we want to work with molarity units. Okay, so let's think this through. Yeah. Okay, I have 50 milliliters of 0.5 molar sodium acetate. So I have 50 milliliters of 0.5 molar. Mm -hmm. So 50 times 0.5 is, is 25, 25 millimoles. millimoles. Now, the way we got that, that's MV equals moles. And I, I'm leaving it in millimoles, so I do not convert this to liters. So I have 25 millimoles, and that's of the acetate. Now, the other question, that's not brackets, and it, what was the other chemical I had? Uh, acetic acid, and you have 25 milliliters. 25 of 0.25. So I have 25 milliliters of 0 0.25 molar, and this is the acetic acid. And that's, is that 12? That's 6.25. 6.25 millimoles of the acetic acid. Now, since we want to work in molarities, I have a total volume, when I pour these together, of 50 plus 25, or 75, 75 milliliters. So the molarity of this Point would be 0.33 molar for the acetate, and this would be 6 and a quarter divided by 75. Point zero eight three 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 three. And that's, yeah, molar. I didn't do that right. I didn't show that right, but you get the idea. So now I can go back to my equilibrium problem, and then the initial concentration of the acetate. Did I do this right, Mr. Yep, James? Point three, point three, three, three. three. And this was 0 0.083. Yep. And this is my ice table. Yes. Minus x, 0 0.083 minus x. Now, I know this is buffered, by the way. How do I know it's buffered? Uh, because we have the uh, acid and its partner. So if you look here, highlighted in green, I have the partner and I have the acid, and they are within a factor of 10 of each other, aren't they? So now I simply just plug it into my cool Ki equation. We're working with acetic acid, so our Ka is still 1.8. Uh, Mr. Bergman, your E for acetate is incorrect. Oh, it's yes, x, so 0 0.33 plus x. There you go. I was testing it. I knew. I figured. Uh, mm -hmm. So x times 0.33 plus x. Now this one, the those terms won't cancel, of course, because they are not the same number, are they? Nope. So now we plug it into our solver. So Mr. Sams is being the solver king right now, and he's going to solve for x. So mm -hmm. make sure you know how to do that. That's important. We're not going to go for that right now, though. So x, and x is the concentration of the hydrogen, if you look at the equation, right? Um, I'll go back here. x right here. I want to change that to pink. x in the hydrogen, right? And so x, when you do the solver thing, is, is equal to... 4.5 times 10 to the negative 6. So to find the pH, which the question asked for, mm -hmm. the pH is the negative log, negative log of the hydrogen point. concentration, or this number right here, 4.5, and that comes out 5 to 5.34. 5.34. So the answer is 5.34. Now, does that make sense? Well, let's ask that let's question. Think. Okay, We've got some acetic acid, mm -hmm. and we have some so, acetate. Okay. So we're, it's going to be an acidic buffer solution, because we're dealing with a weak acid, and that's an acidic pH, so that makes sense. Yeah. Now, one thing to note here, yeah, that's fine. 
I would say because the Ka of this is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, so it's a stronger acid than this is a base. Right. This would be about 10 to the minus 9. 9 and 5 is 14. Yep. And so this is a weaker base than this is an acid, because if it was the reverse of the case, it would actually be the other way around. Right. All right. And I think we have one more thing to do here, the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. Um, yeah, we're almost done. All right. Now, there's a cool equation. I love this equation. As do I. The Henderson-Hasselbach equation. I called it the David Hasselhoff equation. David yeah. Hasselhoff? Yeah. David is Hasselhoff. That? Just because Hasselhoff sounds like Hasselbach and it's fun to say. Uh, so then we, uh, and there's, there's a famous there's a football player whose name is Hasselbach. Oh, uh, we always called it then the, the Baywatch equation the, when I was in college. The because, Baywatch because equation? Because David Hasselhoff was in this horrible TV show called Baywatch. Baywatch. Oh, that's with the bimbos on the beach. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we just, I never watched we just, that show. Yeah, I don't blame you. It's pretty dumb. Okay. Okay. But anyhow, that's what we So here it is. pH equals pKa. We're we'll going to have to talk about what that means in a minute. E plus the log of the base over the acid. What yeah. does a sheep say? Bah. Bah. Base over acid. So that's our easy to remember. Okay. Now, what's a pKa? Uh, well, if pH is the negative log of hydrogens, then pKa is probably going to be the negative log of our Ka. That's correct. So now, the beauty of this particular situation is that we do not have to do all this equilibrium oh. problem we just did. This is called a shortcut, folks. We like shortcuts. So yeah. what we had to do is this whole big equilibrium problem right here. And I think, did I then solve? No. For pH? Yeah. If I want yeah, to remember, for pH. but we did, but we, did, we solved it the long way. Yes. Right? So, um, so what I want to do now is I'll actually, you know, this last problem, we got 5.34 when mm -hmm. we just solved this. And so, guys, what I want to do is under this, this space under the Henderson-Hasselbach, I'm going to resolve this equation, use the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. Now, the first thing I need to do is I need to find the pKa. So the pKa is going to be the negative log of the Ka. Now, the Ka, in this case, if you recall, is 1.8 times 10. 10 to the minus 5. So I just take the negative log of that and I get what? 4.74. 4.74. So Mr. Sams on his calculator has just typed that in. So the equation is pH equals pKa plus the log of the base, the concentration of the base over the concentration of the acid. You probably don't need to recopy this down because it's right there on your paper. So I would say 4.74 plus the log of the base. Now, I'm going to kind of make a huge parenthesis here because I want to do something interesting here. Now, I want to go back where we found our concentrations up here, I think. Yeah, and so we had right here, I'll highlight in pink, 25 milliliters over, or 25 millimoles over 75 milliliters. So I'm going to say um, 25 millimoles. Wait a second. Is that the acid or the base? Am I mixing um, it? That one is the base. Yeah, you're I'm fine. Doing, yeah, you got to put the base on the top. Millimoles over 75 milliliters. And then this other number 6 was... 6.25 millimoles. 6.25 millimoles divided by 75 milliliters. milliliters. Now... Let's just be mathematical, Mr. Sams. What do you see? You could simpl could you simplify? Oh yeah, let's right cancel here? 75. You see the 75s. That color doesn't work, does it? Yeah. How about this color? The 75s cancel, don't they? Yep. So you do not have to actually calculate the molarity like we did nope. just a bit if ago. If you have millimoles, it works in the buffers. So all we need to do is take on our calculator 4.74 plus. So I, I would type it in 4.74 plus log parentheses. 25 divide 6.25 parentheses equals uh, 5.34. 5.34. And that's, folks, the answer we got earlier. All you would have to do is use Mr. Henderson Hasselbach. Now, a caution. When does Mr. Henderson Hasselbach equation apply? Only in buffers. What's a buffer again? Uh, you have to have a weak acid and its partner. So, or a weak base. If you just had a weak base, mm -hmm. could I use it? Nope. Just a weak acid. No. Nope. No. I have to have the partners. The partners. Must have the acid and his partner, or the base and his partner. Okay? Yep. Now, on the base problem, just as a quick note, if I were to use the Henderson-Hasselbach problem and I had a base, I would have to, usually you have the Kb, 
the equation says Ka. So you'd have to find the Ka using the Ka times Kb equation. Yep. So um, that's something to keep in mind as you do it. All right, let's do a couple more examples here. Okay, calculate the pH of the following solution. Now we're going to use the shortcut method because it's better. Mm -hmm. Okay, better is shorter and good. Now, I think this is a, bu a buffer. We've got to double check. What have we got? We've got um, hypochlorous acid. So we've got HOCl. Hulk. And what do we know about Hulk? Hulk. Hulk. All right, what do we know about the Hulk? We've got 25 <laughs> milliliters, and it's 0 0.150 molar. Yeah. Now, if you use the MV mole things, how many millimoles is that, Mr. 3.75 millimoles. Okay, and then we've got KOCL. Now, in the KOCL, who do I care about? OCL. Just O... Mr. Sam. It has the minus charge on it. OCL negative. Yeah. OCL negative. What do I know about OCL negative? I've got a 0.45 molar, and I've got it at 32 milliliters. So if I take M times V... 14.4. 14 14.4 millimoles. Now, do we have a buffer? We do. We have a weak acid and its conjugate partner. And they're within a factor of 10. Yes. So now, we to find the pH, we can use this cool henderson hasselbalch equation. So we can say the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log... Bah. Right? Have to look up K that. So you then have to look up the Ka of HOCl. So let's fix that out here. So um, the Ka, I'll come back to that screen. The Ka of HOCl is equal to the value of the Ka is 3.5 3 .5 times 10 to the negative 8. 10 to the negative 8. So Mr. Sams, let's take the negative log of that. Negative log of, of the Ka. 5 times 10 to the negative 8. Be seven point something, right? Seven point four six. Seven point forty six. So now I'm going to go back to this screen here. So that's going to give seven point four six plus the log of the base. Now I got to go back. The base. Let's think this through. The base. This is an acid, and the op his partner is a base. So the base is the four point four number. So that'll be four. 0.4 divided by, now I go back to the acid, I can't keep this in my long-term memory very well. Oh, it's 14.4 over 3.75. Most of you probably caught that because you had the papers in front of you. You simply just type that in and you get... Uh, 8.04. 8.04. So this could be done the long way, okay guys, like we did up here. If you remember this problem right here, we could go back and do this problem and do the x, minus x, plus x, da 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 get a ka, or we could just use Mr. Henderson Hasselbach equation and we become happy campers. We like happy campers. It's good. Yep. Okay? All right. Oh, actually, you know what we're going to do here. Um, you know what I was going to do on this? We've already done this before. This is where we simplify. We're going to just skip this slide. It's unimportant. I've already shown already this concept to yep. you. And then we do want to do one more where we have a base okay. and use the henderson hasselbalch equation. All right, what have we got here? We have the pH when we have 25 milliliters of 0.5 molar methyl ammonium nitrate. Now, there sounds like a nasty chemical. Mm. Methyl ammonium nitrate. Yeah, now, no guys, if you would take your, uh, your book and open to the appendix, um, or those who don't have, uh, our, don't have the books or whatever, you need to find a table of KBs, yep. and you could. The, one of the common ones is this thing called methyl methylamine. Uh, methylamine. Let's do methylamine first because he's easier. You'll find yep. him, and his formula is CH3 NH2. Yep. And what we know about this character is that he is 75 milliliters, and it's 0 0.30 molar. So his millimoles are. Mr. Sams is going to take uh, M right, we got times 22. V, 22.5 millimoles. And then the methyl ammonium, or ammonium is just going to have one more H. That's CH3, NH3 positive. And that's reacted with, technically it's CH3, NH3, NO3. But the nitrate breaks apart, or breaks off, and you're left with this guy right yep, here. Nitrate never affects pH. Nitrate doesn't affect pH. So it's 0 0.50 molar, and it's 25 milliliters. So when you multiply those out, how 12. many millimoles? 5. We have 12 and a half millimoles. Now, do we have a buffer? We do. So with a buffer, we can use the? Henderson Hasselbach. So we now have our numbers, 12.5 and 22.5. Now, we do have a particular instance. So when you look in your table in the back of your book or in a table, we can look up the KB 
of a methyl ammoni, uh, methylamine, CH3 and H2. And that value, Mr. Sams, is what from your book? Here? It is three, or 4.38 times 10 to the negative 4. Now, in the uh, henderson hasselbach equation, it says right. pH equals pKa. This is a Kb. Yep. So I need to find the Ka. And yep. remember, the Kw divided by the Kb equals the Ka. Ka. Or that comes from the equation Ka times Kb equals Kw. So when you get the Ka, you get 2.28 times 10 to the negative 11. And of course, we want to find the pKa. So if you take the negative log of this value here, you'll get the pKa, and that'll be 10 and some change. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, it is. Sorry, hang on. Mr. Uh, Sams is fierce. I was starting on something else. 10.6. 10.6. So you've got to find the pKa. So there's a little additional step here if you have a base problem. So now we can use our Henderson Hasselbalch equation. pH equals 10.76. 10.64 10 if you want another six. 10.64 plus the log of the base over the acid. So let's go back and figure out who was the base and who was the acid. All right, the base is the methylamine and his conjugate acid is the methyl ammonium. So it'll be 22 and a half over 12 and a half. So I'll say 22.5 divided by 12.5. And that's it, folks. 10.64 plus this log, and you're done. We get 10.90. 10.90. So that's the pH of this solution. The only trick on this particular problem is understand this Ka, Kb, Kw thing. Um, and probably the other trick is this screen here, is that you have to understand who is who. Actually, I think this is the problem everybody has, is to understand which chemicals you're dealing with. Methyl ammonium, nitrate, that sounds like just this horrible thing to name, but if you find methyl amine, then they're giving you his partner and you ignore, you cross him out, the nitrate, you have methyl ammonium, okay? Folks, um, this will get you lots of things to get started on the whole concept of acids and bases, acid-based buffers, because you see, I am buff. You know, I've been taking, I think about taking a, a, a trip, Mr. Sams. Oh, yeah, where to? I was thinking about buying a, well, it's actually where. Well, I was going to Milwaukee, but oh, yeah, that's a right, new vehicle. I was thinking about getting a new vehicle oh, to yeah. get me there. What do you get? I was going to get the Millennium Falcon. Millennium Falcon? Yeah. Oh, I mean, like, think from Star Wars? Yeah. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. might fly me there faster than hyperspace. hyperspace. Yeah. 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 I've also been a little bit hungry lately. Oh, yeah? What are you going to It's kind of around lunch. I was going to get some moldy bread. Ugh. Yeah, I know. It yeah. doesn't sound very good. Well, it's a lot of protein. Yeah. Well, we promised you a short podcast, and we lied. We're sorry. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye, Bye. guys.